capital term is data terminal equipment DTE so DTEs are generally what you will look after It's considered a part of the CPE or customer premise equipment generally if anyone says it's a CPE what it means is it's down to you to fix unless you've got a managed service which I presume as a, a Cisco engineer and the fact you're learning the, the Cisco CCNA um, it's it's you looking after the network and um, normally if your provider your telecommunications provider or telco says it's part of the CPE what they're saying to you is it's down to you to fix it and so examples of DTE devices are terminals personal computers routers this certainly this this part of your router the cable will normally connect to some presentation on the wall and then after that you'll have I didn't mention it here but you'll have a local loop which will connect somehow to your uh, service provider it just depends um, again which connection you've got now over the other side which we don't normally worry about but we do need to know as a CCNA is your DCE data communication equipment so the DCEs are owned by the carrier the telecommunications company the purpose of the DCE is to provide the clocking and switching so I'll just write this down the clocking is normally just uh, configured on a command and when you're doing Cisco labs for CCNA you will normally put the clock rate on whichever end has got the DCE cable so one end will have the DTE end and the other the other end will have the DCE but you basically get your clock clocking which is there on this on the Cisco equipment on Cisco routers it's with a clock rate command the DCEs also uh, provide the switching services and we're talking about switching layer 2 frames here across wide area networks we're not talking about um, the Cisco switches that you normally configure for the the CCNA so um, in most cases these are packet switches okay so what we're concerned with basically is a connection between your router here all the way across the carrier to the other router here now there's two types of circuit we obviously said it's a packet switch network but there's two types of circuit that can connect the two now SVCs are less common SVC stand for switch virtual circuits um, I, as, as I said I supported frame relay at Cisco for a couple of years and we really didn't get many calls about these at all um, perhaps they weren't very popular with the the frame relay service providers but an SVC is a temporary connection used in situations where you only require sporadic uh, transfer between DC, um, DTE devices so if really there's only a fairly rare connection going between your router here to the router here there's no need to set up a permanent link going across your carrier so I'll just put here temp for temporary Again, it's the sort of question they can ask you in the CCNA exam and it's a shame to, to miss out on, on marks like that now once this connection is torn down so at the end of the data transfer it ceases to exist so if there was another communication to take place another switch virtual circuit would need to be set up of course if this is happening too often then it kind of begs the question why you're using an, an SVC um, you're more likely to want the second type which we'll come to in a minute alright so we've covered the first type of circuits the next type of circuit is known as a PVC so the first one was switch virtual circuit this is known as a permanent virtual circuit so PVCs are permanently established connections uh, they're used for frequent and consistent data transfer between DTE, device, DTE devices and obviously again although you won't see it it's going through the frame relay service provider 
So the thing about TV, uh, the PVCs is you don't require the call to be set up, the termination to take place. Okay, so an important term that we need to be familiar with, which is building on from PVCs, if we're using a PVC, is DLCI, commonly referred to as DALC or DALCs if you're in the plural. It stands for Data Link Connection Identifier. A DALC is basically a logical number and it's in the range of 16 up to 1007. You can read the RFC if you want to know more, but really for the purposes of the CCNA, um, we just need that to know that piece of information. It's issued by your your frame relay service provider, so we don't get to pick it. But uh, the DALC has said it's a logical number, um, and it's user identify the PVC between you, which is the CPE down here, and the frame relay switch. So I'll put FRW, frame relay switch. So all this number does is to identify, because you remember this frame relay switch here, if you actually could see it physically, it's got quite a large number of ports that have been used by many other customers. So what they will do is map a certain port with a DELSI number, which will physically go out, and that will be used to identify the connection between them and you. So the DELSI number basically runs from here to here. So let's see, let's say the DELSI number is 10, just for argument's sake. That has absolutely no bearing on the DELSI number between, say, you own this router up here as well. DELSI number here, say, could be 36. But what happens is, all it, the whole point of the DELSI is so you can get a connection going from your router here to the frame relay switch. So that's all we care about because in the middle here your frame relay service provider could be sending those packets to through any number of switches. And they take care of the, the switch under these frame relay packets and then once it gets to the frame relay switch for your um, provider it will send out a market for Dell C110. So basically the, Del the important thing to remember is the Dell C is only lo locally significant Right, so so far we've talked about PVC, SVCs, DTEC, or DCE and DTE, and we've talked about uh, DLC. So there's a few of the bits I'd like to discuss. If we go back to our network diagram. Right, so I want to talk about keeper lives, and these are in the form of LMI. LMI stands for Local Management Interface. Um, so the LMI is best defined as the signaling standard that's used between the router and the frame relay switch. So although the, we have the DALC, again, which is the mapping between your router and the frame relay switch, the LMI is the keep alive. So the LMI is used by the switch. It learns which DALCs are defined and what their status is. So we just underline this here. Some of the features, again, we'll we'll put keep keeps here for keeper lives. Every ten seconds, an LMI message is sent from the frame relay switch to your router. What it does, it verifies that the PVC is active and also the data has been exchanged. And we're going to look at an LMI debug when we actually log on to a live router. And there's three types of keeper lives that exist. The first thing, or the first one, and most importantly, is Cisco. Cisco have got their own um, LMI type. So this is a default. This is a default LMI type, and um, when you first boot up your frame relay 
connection and the first one that we tried is uh, a Cisco 